Hey guys, Pokesick29 here. Uh, welcome to the next episode of Magic Battle Coding. In this episode, we are going to implement wands. I have sort of an idea of how I want to do it, so we're going to give it a try and see if it'll work. I think it will. Uh, before we begin, just uh, two quick things. The first is, I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but I will try to make up for it. Uh, this weekend, I'll try to post, you know, this one tonight and possibly one or two more over the weekend. So, I am back. I have not abandoned you all. I love you all. You are all great people. The second thing is, um, in case you can't tell, um, I have restored, I had to restore my computer to factory settings because, um, it was having a few problems, it would randomly shut down, and it wouldn't turn on, and I had to reinstall macOS. You know, crazy stuff. So, I restored it to factory settings, I reinstalled all of my programs manually, I copied over all of my files. So I still have all of the files and whatever, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been able to do much, because I've been busy uh, restoring and then, you know, redoing everything on my computer. It took me a little while to get my copy of ScreenFlow back, which is why it took so long. And you may also notice that I'm running a newer version of Eclipse. I have decided that I might as well upgrade to the newer version. Um, it's on all of the school computers at my school uh, for the programming class, and I've so I use it in school don't really have a choice, and it's good, it's, you know, very, it's very similar to the old Eclipse, so if you still do have the old Eclipse, it doesn't really matter, there really isn't too much of a difference, but this is, I believe, Kepler version 3.3, .3 or something like that, Kepler, um, I don't know what version number it is, it's like, oh, 4.3, okay, close enough, so, I am running a newer version of Eclipse, not too much of a difference. I could get the classic one if I really wanted to, but figured I might as well update. Alright, so, here is our Magic Battle class. Um, I did a little fix for the task ID, which I said I would fix. I just made a task ID integer, uh, declared it in the class, not in the method. I set the task ID equal to the schedule of the task, and then I cancel it. So that was just a quick, easy fix, and it will be available in the source code in the description. So let's go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and actually make... I'm thinking about making the wands an enumerator, because there really isn't a reason why each wand needs to have its own class. It just needs basic information like the name... Uh, maybe the color, so like a fire wand would be chat color dot red, uh, uh, you know, etc. And we're also going to implement a special uh, runnable class so that when we go to make the events, we will make a player interact event that will. So when a player interacts, if they're in a game and their um and their the item that they have is a wand, then it will actually activate the effect of the wand for that interactive. So, let's go ahead and make, uh, we'll call this wand. So we have our wand enumerator. So first we're going to go ahead and write a uh, private string name, private chat color color, and we're going to go ahead and write private wand runnable run and so you can go ahead and import uh give it a second you go ahead and import chat color i don't know why i'm getting an error on string i believe yeah i believe um so for right now let's just go ahead and define one wand it will be called the fire wand and it will be the name will be fire, it will be chat color dot red, and new wand runnable, and we will go ahead and implement that code soon, and what's, oh, come alright, so, so what we're doing basically is we have our three variables, the name, the color, and the runnable, we may add some more, I'm not sure, then we're going to go ahead and write wand, uh, string, name, 
chat color color wand runnable run okay so then we're going to go ahead and say this dot name equals name this dot color equals color and this dot run equals run so um, I'm sure that you probably recognize this is very similar to a um, to a class in that we have our variables right here and we have our constructor notice how it's not public or private it's just you know the default constructor that is how it works in enumerators if you try to make it public or private you will get an error so and then you can also define methods one thing that you can't do is you can't um, you know store an integer value and like let's say that you wanted to like I, I don't know what you could do but you can't really store an integer value and then add and subtract for it enumerators are great for um, things that will always be constants like instead of having a ton of public static final fields in your class you can just have an enumerator so uh, public string get name return name uh, public chat color get color return color um, public string get full name return color plus name just a nice easy method uh, public void run player interact event e run dot run e so now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and actually make the wand runnable class. Now this class is only going to be used in the wand enumerator, so we can go ahead and declare it right here. Class wand runnable. Or actually it will be an abstract class runnable. And it will have a um, public abstract void run player interact event go ahead and import player interact event and basically what we're doing is we are creating this um, wand runnable class and inside of the wand runnable class uh, there's a void called run which takes a player interact event so we're going to actually when we do the listeners create a player interact event that will listen and if it and if everything passes then we will call run and we will pass the event. Instead of having to pass on the player and all of the data, we can just pass an instance of player interact event. And, you know, once you get it in this wand, so anything that happens in here, we already know it's the right, right wand or whatever, so you can just call the different methods like, you know, e.getplayer. Whatever. So we'll, so we'll go ahead and implement that later. So now we need our uh, public void run player interact event e so this run method once we implement the listener uh, we're gonna have the listener call um, you know we're gonna get the wand that the player has and you know we'll probably implement some different methods so here let's go ahead and we'll write one right now public static wand for name string name and what this will do is it will take the name because the way that the wand is going to work is it's going to be a um it'll be a stick with the name on it so like fire so we're going to say for wand w this dot or we can't use this wand dot values good um if w dot get name dot equals ignore case name return w and then we'll do return null and I'm actually gonna go like that okay so this nice for name method will allow us to easily um, get a wand by the name so if they have a wand if one wand that says fire it will return the fire wand and then you can just call wand dot for name whatever dot run and it will run it so let's do a quick example fire wand is easy e dot um what's wrong with that e dot get player okay good dot get world i don't know why it's getting an error dot launch 
projectile fireball dot class. It's not launch projectile, is it? Dot maybe it's shoot. Or maybe no, I think it's the player that not get world. So I think I don't know why Eclipse is not helping me out here. Okay, there we go. So it is launch projectile. So we'll say um fireball B or FB and go ahead and import that fireball. Uh FB dot and I, I really I don't know what's wrong with this. Set is incendiary false. Did I spell that wrong? Yes, I did. Um, basically, what, you're, what we're doing is we're launching a fireball. We're setting it so that it won't damage the terrain. And FB dot set yield to 0.0. .0. I believe I'm not actually completely sure what that does, but um, I think it. I, I'm actually not. Looks like it has something to do with the explosion, but we just, we don't want the explosion to happen. I believe it's zero. If it doesn't work for whatever reason, I'll check it. So the fire wand is super easy for that. Okay, so the last thing we need to do in this video is in the arena class, we have this uh, add wand right here, and we want to go ahead and add a random wand to the player's inventory. Now, you could change this so that there are different classes or donators get wands based on their permissions, but I'm just going to go ahead and make it nice and easy because this is meant to be adapted, not directly used for the most part. And, you know, later on, what we can add more wands, but I just wanted to give a good example. Then we'll go ahead and say... Oh, and you know what? Let's go ahead and make another method. Public item stack create item stack because then what we can do is we can just create a method that will easily give you know an item stack so uh, item stack I equals new item stack um, material dot stick one um, item meta I am equals I dot get sorry I dot get item meta I am dot set display name to get full name. Uh, you know, you could add lore if you want it. You could even do private string name and then like a string array or a string vargs, whatever of lore, if you wanted to give it special powers. So we could just go, or sorry, special lore. So we could just say set lore to arrays dot as list. And then we'll go ahead and say um, a magic wand. I dot set item meta I am return I. I believe that's all we need to do, at least for now. So then we can go ahead and say p dot get inventory dot add item uh, wand dot. Oh, you know, I just realized we wrote that for name method, but I guess there really isn't really there really isn't a reason for it because no, you know what? There is a reason for it. <laughs> Never mind. All right, wand dot values, and that will return an array list. It should return an array of values, and we want to get it at new random dot next int wand.values.length oh and then at the very end dot get dot create item stack okay so what we're doing here is we are adding an item and it's going to be wand.values that'll return an array of all the different values at position, we're instantiating the random class, and we're calling next int with the ceiling being the number of things. So, so you won't get a random number that is not that wouldn't correspond to a value. And then finally, we're calling. So once we get the the random wand, we're calling create item stack. So that is all we need to do to to handle the uh, creating the item stack and you know adding. And then when we create the um, listeners, we'll do the player interact event that will. Uh, take care of all of that.
All right. So I believe that's all we need to cover in this episode. Uh, we implemented a wand enumerator, made a made one sample wand, and implemented it into the arena class. So in the next episode, let's see, still what we need to do. Listeners are definitely a big thing, so I think we'll probably work on listeners and I guess probably maybe more wands or we'll start on the listeners. I'll figure it out. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. I will see you guys very soon. Goodbye and have a nice weekend.